Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's happening in the world of movies and TV? Well, Netflix is kind of dropping the ball a little bit recently. Yeah, I've heard that there's been a bit of a controversy lately. Yeah, so um, I just want to say I'm, I personally believe that I'm liberal. So, um, yeah. Let me, let me start from the top. So there's a movie on Netflix called Cuties. Yeah, and it's uh, apparently pretty spicy. It's beyond spicy. It's actually pretty um, – It's you know when you get spicy kimchi and you, you wish you didn't buy kimchi just to be – like to begin with? <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. So it's a movie that – it's a French film that sexualizes 11-year-old girls and Netflix refuses to take it down. Yeah, there's been a lot of outcry online about this. Uh, yeah, it's not a good look for Netflix. No, and it's and while I was researching this, um, all the articles I found were criticizing the conservatives, saying, "Oh, you know, it's a liberal film, and they, the conservative conservatives just don't understand." And that that's not true. I think that nobody understands unless you're. <laughs> Unless you're into that kind of thing. Uh, and, and actually in Texas, lawmakers are pushing to ban the movie. Yeah, uh, I, I can see why. Like I've read descriptions of some of the stuff that goes on in the movie and I, I can't believe it got made in the first place. Yeah, I can't believe it was made either. Um, the only thing Netflix has done is they've apologized about the original, um, what do you call that? Uh uh, cover art. They they they, they, apolog they apologized about the original cover art, but they like they like I say they refused to take it down. But hey, there's more than Netflix. There is. Have you ever um have you ever thought about getting getting YouTube Premium? Uh, I've had it in the past. Okay. Yeah. What did you get it for? I got it for Cobra Kai. Ah, Cobra Kai was uh is actually a really good show. Season three is going to be on Netflix if you haven't seen Cobra Kai yet. Yep. Because um, not everybody has YouTube Premium. It's worth it just so you can turn your phone off and listen to music, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, it's got a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's actually about Johnny Lawrence 30 years after the original Karate Kid movie. It's amazing what they've done with that show. They've taken kind of the villain character. Yeah. From the original movie, and uh, you know it's it's later in his life. You're seeing how he's doing, or seeing how uh, the Karate Kid is doing, yes. and how their life uh, compares and contrasts. And uh, sometimes you're not rooting for the Karate Kid; you're rooting for Johnny. Yeah, dare I say Johnny's the good guy, and the Karate Kid is the villain. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny to see the shoe on the other foot there, but. Uh... If Cobra Kai isn't enough to get to paying for YouTube Premium, if you've seen Vsauce and uh, really miss Adam, they've got a show that came out in 2018 called Mindfield. It's it's basically a long format Vsauce show if you haven't seen it, and there's 24 mind blowing, entertaining episodes. Um. But not, not everything is on Netflix and YouTube. No. No. Believe it or not, there was a time where I used to go to the movie store and um, they would give me a movie that I could only keep for like three or seven days. Whoa. I'd have to give it back or else they would charge me a million dollars. That's what it seems like. Yeah, actually. Um, oh, crap. What's, what's, you know that, what's that movie with um, Seth Green? And uh, it's got the sausages. Oh, sausage party. So yeah, sausage party. Speaking of rentals, um, somebody was uh, <laughs> uh, one of the last privately owned movie stores in America. Uh, it's been it had been out of business for a while, but they were still trying to collect their old debts for um, <laughs> late fees, and this guy got taken to court over a late fee for a sausage party. And um, Seth Green actually paid for... Yeah, he gave him a copy and paid for the for his debt. Oh, wow. But uh, that's a little bit of a tangent. Have you ever watched the movie Hackers? 
Uh, hackers. I I think I might have like back in the nineties. Yeah, it. This is one of those old movies you should really watch or rewatch. It, it came out in nineteen ninety five. It only got a thirty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, it's kind of a cult classic. And it was it was Angelina Jolie's first time um, in a major lead role in a major film, and she plays the role of Acid Burn, a hardcore hacker. <clears throat> and uh yeah it's it's hilariously outdated now. You probably yeah it's probably <laughs> got like those famous like 90s hacking sequences where people okay, But I, uh, I just totally messed up our audio when I did that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just one of those movies that if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. And if you haven't watched it recently, you should probably rewatch it. It's probably like an interesting view on how kind of Hollywood saw hackers like back in the 90s and how like unrealistic it, it probably was. Like hackers, yeah. really they're just looking at lines of text That's for, right. for most of what they do. And uh, yeah. You know, sometimes they've got a little, little program that they, they just double click. And then nothing even happens. It does. It doesn't look like anything happens. But someone's computer off in um, is, is that Russia. the movie with the famous line "Hack the planet"? Yeah, hack the planet oh, and uh, and crash and burn. Yeah, those are some pretty famous lines from it. And also, you get to see Angelina Jolie as a young, attractive nineteen-year-old. Um, and Angel, it was Angelina Jolie's first leading role in a major film. So oh, wow. if you are a fan. It's a shame if you haven't watched it yet. Especially if you've seen all the Tomb Raiders. I mean, come on. Um, but that's all I've got today. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break, and I'm going to be back to tell you about video game news. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about um, video games. All right. And kicking things off this week is a sequel. It's uh, Spelunky 2 from Moss Mouth. It's coming out for the PC and a PS4. And it's a, a 2D action platformer, which is a sequel to the original Spelunky. Did, have you ever played the original Spelunky? Unfortunately, I haven't actually had a chance to uh, to play Spelunky. Yeah, it's a fun game. Okay. It's a, it's a roguelike. It's a 2D side-scrolling <sighs> roguelike. You get to guide your adventurer through procedurally generated levels, collecting treasure and items while you uh, search for your family. Of course, it's a roguelike, so there's emergent gameplay. Yeah. And they have this nice kind of risk versus reward system where you kind of give something up to gain something else. And you see if that pays oh. off as the game goes on. And as a roguelike, that can be kind of dangerous. It can. Like, there are, you die a lot in playing the Spelunky games. A couple of new features as well for Spelunky 2. There's new multiplayer mode, so you get to play with your friends. Okay, and, I like roguelikes that are multiplayer. Yeah, and check this out. Okay. They now have mounts, so you get to ride a giant <laughs> turkey. <laughs> Just in time for Thanksgiving. And guess what? If your health is low, you can blow up the turkey for a turkey leg and get your health back. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, it's got 91 on Metacritic. Oh. I think mostly for the turkey explosions. That's a really high score for uh, really anything from Metacritic. Yeah. Is, uh, it, is it like 2D? Yeah, it's a 2D side scroller. It's got nice. a nice cartoony art style. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very fun to play. I've played it. I've never actually beat the original Splunky because it's hard. Yeah, the thing about roguelikes is you're going to die a lot. Yeah. But uh, you don't lose unless you quit. Yeah. And with uh, Splunky, you die in hilarious ways. Like, you know, you get run over by lava and boulders and such like that. Is it on Steam? Uh, yeah, it's on Steam. Oh, I'm going to have to pick it up. Yeah, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. There's actually a free Flash 
version, I think. Huh. So did it kind of start as a Flash? It did. That's cool. I, I love it when developers start in Flash, get enough of a following to actually make a full feature title. Yeah, I, th- I think it's not Flash. I think it's Game Maker, but it's the same thing. He, oh, yeah. He did a free yeah. version first, and then it got uh, ported to a commercial version, which got console releases. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Now, Jesse. Yeah? Did you know in the far future of humanity? In the far future of humanity? There's only war. <gasps> no! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's kind of the famous line from Warhammer 40K. And uh, recently released uh, Necromunda Underhive Wars, which takes place in the Warhammer 40K universe. It's all about the grim darkness. Oh, edgy. Yeah, yeah. So it's set in the underbelly of a massive hive city. You take control of one of three gangs. You get to customize your gang members and send them out in tactical missions to survive the brutal life in the Underhive. And it's turn-based tactics because it's okay. based on a tabletop uh, game from uh, the guys who do Warhammer. I I would love that because uh, the last Warhammer game I've uh, I saw I've, I haven't had a chance to play it, but uh, it's uh, what's that Warhammer game that is? It's like a real-time kind of uh, Dawn of War. Yeah, Dawn of War. And I was I was always wishing that there was a turn-based strategy version. And we finally have it. Yeah. Well, it's uh, if you butt pick it up, you can play it with four of your friends in online gameplay. Wow. Uh, it's not doing spectacular on Metacritic 61 right now. But if you're a Warhammer fan, if you're a fan of the Grim Darkness, then uh, that one might be for you. Yeah, I feel like the only reason why it got a low score in Metacritic is because there isn't a whole lot of turn-based strategy games right now. Not now. They're seeing a little bit of a resurgent, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, in the '90s there was a ton of them. But uh, oh yeah, I I still play. Um, um, I still play games. <laughs> no, I uh, I still play Civ Civilization. Yep, I, Civ- so. Civilization is always a solid one. And uh, Fraxis, the guys who do Civilization, they've also ha- put out a recent edition of XCOM, which is fabulous as well. Really? Yep. There's uh, they remade the '90s versions of uh, XCOM. So you you blow my mind every single day. You know that I I am in the know. <laughs> if there's a no, I am right up in there. Yeah. All right. Next up, NBA 2K21 from Visual Concepts. Uh, it's available for all major platforms. It's basketball with a deep simulation system, hmm. and uh, well, it's a sports game. So a lot of people are saying. It's the same game as last year, just with a new roster. Yeah. And there's microtransactions, which people aren't ha- that happy about. Oh, great. Just yeah. what we needed. <laughs> yeah. Remember, microtransactions started with horse armor. What? Yep. What game? Oblivion. Oh. The Elder Scrolls. It started with horse armor. Look it up. Anyway, <laughs> because of that, uh, 2K21, 68 on Metacritic right now. Yeah, and because of that... 50 because right here right here medium minute 50 <laughs> <laughs> and no horse armor it would have got at least had a 55 if there was horse armor if he had horse armor in nba 2k21 maybe it would have been worth actually it. you know what if they had horse armor in nba 2k21 i'd give that solid 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent all right next up i gotta throw buzzwords at you all right okay. first person rhythm based roguelike shooter yeah what yeah, that's uh, it's, it's a bit crazy. It's BPM, bullets per minute from We're... Awe Interactive. I'm in awe. Yeah. Blast your way through eight Norse-themed levels. Norse-themed levels? Yep. There's rhythm and boom-booms? Yep. You play a Valkyrie, apparently, and you uh, play along to a pounding heavy metal soundtrack. That's And you have badass. to fire your weapon to the beat of the music. There's some unlockable yeah, you can't characters beat that. as well. No, it's, uh, it's quite the mashup of things. Yeah, it's got uh, 74 on Metacritic right now. 74? That's yeah. not bad. No, 74 is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, okay. Have you ever played any of those old cell arcade racers? Oh, uh, Pole Position. Yeah. I pole, was really good at Pole Position. Pole Position and uh, a little bit later, Virtual Racer in the arcades. Oh, yeah. Remember those days with the polygonal graphics? Well, they're back with Hot Shot Racing. 
Hotshot from, Racing. From Lucky Mountain Games. It's out for the PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. And yeah, it has that old style, kind of polygonal art style. You get to select from an array of colorful drivers, each with their own set of vehicles. There's multiple multiplayer modes. And uh, it's a little bit of a budget game, though. It's like 20 okay. bucks, So the content, a little bit limited right now. But people kind of like it. 76 on Metacritic, because it scratches that old arcade racer itch. Yeah, I've always been a big racing game player, <clears throat> and the Gran Turismo series has always been my go-to, but it's it's a simulation-type game. Yeah. And the pole position and games like it have never really been a simulation-type experience, and that's not what you're going for when you play it. No, you're going to try to make, like, sick drifts that you could never do in real life. That's right. Yeah. Or just go... Like, especially in pole position, you had to have, uh, you had to memorize the maps and you had to have good reflexes. And it wasn't about, like, tire uh, temperature and uh, suspension settings. It was about getting to the finish line as fast as you could. I'm going to blow your mind right now. Yeah? Okay, I'm going to blow Jesse's mind, I guarantee it. Jesse, have you ever seen the pole position cartoon? What? Yeah, there was a pole position cartoon back in the 80s. Holy sh... Shish kebab. <laughs> uh, Jesse's broken. What was it? Huh? <laughs> how, how did it... What is it? So... Yes. You, gotta, you gotta tell me more. What, what's going on in this pole position show? <laughs> I, I don't... I've never actually watched an episode, but I have seen the introduction for it. And oh. they, they have, like, a rocky and 80s soundtrack. It's like, pole position. Like yeah. The, yeah. Next episode, I'm covering pole position this show. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're both going to watch it together. <laughs> in spirit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I knew that one would blow your mind. Yeah. One last game. Uh, it's actually a uh, recent port... It's uh, Minoria from Bomb Service. It came out for the PC last year. It's now out for the PS4, Xbox, and Switch. And it's a Metroidvania. Okay. Yeah. So if you like those games like uh, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, mm -hmm. Metroid, it's that type of game. You get to venture forth as Sister Similia. To burn down the pillars of heresy. All right. It's, uh, Middle. Yeah, it's got an anime art style. And uh, people are they're saying good things about the control system. Like those type of games, you have to have really tight controls. Oh, and yeah, this... that's what kills most uh, uh, Metroidvania games. Is... Yes. Yeah. And this one seems to do it. It's uh, considered challenging, which is good. And it's doing fairly well, 77 on Metacritic. People are, are digging it. Yeah. Speaking of hot shots, though, did you ever play the Hot Shot Golf series? I have, yes. Yeah, it. That's definitely one of my favorite uh, favorite games. Uh, something that we don't get to see a whole lot of right now, and I hope that eventually someone will come out with a cartoon arcade style golfing game again. I think there's some stuff in the works, so I'll have to. I'll tell you what. I'll let you know about it next time. All right. That's it from this edition of Media Minute. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And hit that like button and subscribe.